and I found that locket was wide open. And I said, hey, look, Uncle Rick's on the floor. And when I reached down to pick it up, the minute I picked it up, we could smell pipe tobacco. He's there, yeah. And then um, Shelby was again involved. in Shelby, she was at a school recital where they did a dance routine between ball games. And the whole family was there. Grandpa Olson was sitting next to me. And there was a lady on the other side of him sitting right next to him. And uh, her mom and her dad and her nieces and uncles and you know all in this little group. And when she got through, she came running up the stairs, and the, minute, the closer she got, the more we could smell. And it was to the point where it was so powerful, the hair was literally standing on your know, back of your neck type thing. And, and Grandpa Olson said, can you guys smell that? And we all said, yeah, that's just Uncle Rick, he's here. And the lady sitting on the other side of, of Grandpa Olson said, smell what? What are you guys smelling? She said, I don't smell anything. Yeah. Now the most common time you'll actually smell something from a person who's passed is at the funeral as you're driving in a limousine to the yeah. burial ground that, because the spirit will come back and say, I'm okay, I'm in heaven, I'm healed or I'm healthy, everything's happy, celebrate my life, don't be sad, don't cry for me because they're there trying to cheer you up. My husband did that to my son. But you know what I think, like, okay, for my father, I cry because... I miss him so much, I can't touch him or feel him. Yeah, but they're around. Yeah. But the just thing talk is, to them. just talk to them. They won't I do. And they hear you. They don't have to be in the room. But or... I'm still sad because I want to touch him. I want to feel him. Yeah. Do you have vivid dreams about him? Never. No. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of times always... they'll, they'll come to you. I have no experience. I don't know what it is. So when I went to Enterprise Rental Car to get my car to come here, the lady, I guess, she's a young girl. We, she was like, "Where? So where are you going?" And I said, "I'm gonna go to the Mason House Inn." She goes, "Oh, that sounds nice." I said, "Yeah, it's supposed to be haunted. I'm trying to experience if humans are still alive after they yes. die." And she the goes, answer is, "What's that?" The easy answer is yes. I still haven't experienced it, but anyway, she goes. Well, then I can feel comfortable in telling you there's somebody standing right behind you and he's touching your shoulder. She's like, I never tell this to a client, but because of that, I said, oh my God. And then people came in behind, they opened up the door, came in and it went away. Yeah. And I was, and she's like, is it still there? She's like, nope. And I'm like, oh, you know, it's like, God. but, um, you have to open yourself up to the sensitivity of it. It how takes do a I while. Do it's just gradual. Just. Relax and let things happen around you and accept the things that happen around you and it's a process It doesn't happen overnight because these I think <clears> I'm <throat> okay So I've always had this act overactive imagination and I can scare myself out of nothing Just nothing. I just start you, thinking well, about you gotta, you gotta stop scare it in a sense Don't let it scare you let it happen Okay, and accept it happening and once you accept it the floodgates will open up and they will come and talk to you Wow It'll be a part of you Okay. But you, yeah, like but you, it, but until you start, like you left the room. If you had stayed there, they may have been more active with you. But because you left the room, they felt that they had overdone you and were, had scared you. And they didn't they didn't at all. It was myself. But, but they didn't want to scare you. I see. So they basically stopped at that point. That tells them, back off, because you, wow. you weren't ready to accept it. I see. But when you're ready to accept it and stay there and just relax and let it happen around you as part of the world around you, then they'll help you. So can <clears throat> can I explain something on my little journey or my quest in this afterlife? Because I'm scared of death myself. Oh, it's After what we've learned on the box, it's nothing to be afraid of. It's great. And it's, it's a big party on the other side, basically. All family and friends are there. You're in a soul circle. Everybody hangs around together. They do things together. They interact with this side. It's just a wonderful thing. And who you yeah. are in this life is who you are in the next life. You don't change your humor, your personality. Everything carries on. I have two questions. Are your dogs there? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So dogs have cats, spirits? Cats and dogs. Do they have souls? No. No. But they have spirits. Spirit. We have two dogs that passed while we were here. And they're here. It. We have spirit cats that, that are here from the 1800s. There is, I guess, the shell. Shell, the white, the yolk. Okay. Is the yolk the egg? Yes and no. Oh, you're right. Is the white the egg? Yes and no. Is the shell the... Can one do without the other? I suppose you could do without the yolk, but... I see. see, we, see so there's body, soul, and spirit, and together it makes a whole. 
But you can separate them, and this one goes there, and this one goes. I there. don't understand why you even there. have a soul if it's nothing. It is something. God's it's breath. God's God's own has your soul. But I don't understand what is it, something like that to God when my consciousness and who I am isn't in it. Because it's his little part of you and he gets it back. I, I See, I can't. Do you ever give somebody something and then when they die you get it back? No. Because you gave it to that person and now they're dispersing that person's belongings and oh, you gave this to her so here you can have that back. And sometimes I think there's some things that so you don't... I understand that, but I don't understand. It, it's not for us to all understand it's everything. Not for us, um, there's certain parts of after death that they're not allowed to talk about or explain to us. Did they say that? Yes. yes. And, and why? Why? Because it's not... For, as because I learned through brunt force, it's not for us to know. I was asking a question on the box one time, and I was talking about heaven and what happens and what was going on. And... The electronic box, all of a sudden there was a perfectly pitched harp, harp sound and a voice from heaven said, not for you to know yet, and click the, the toggle switch on the box physically shut off. And Chris Moon says he has never had anybody shut the box off in his entire life except for me. Wow. So we turned it on again and I pursued my questions and immediately that harp sound came back and says, not for you to know yet, in a sterner voice. And this time the toggle went off again. So there are things that we are not, we can't handle the answers. Yeah. And it's not for us to know. That makes sense because I still can't comprehend the soul now, spirit thing. But. Yeah. And one of the things that they, somebody asked about heaven and its beauty <clears> and stuff <throat> like that. And the one thing that they said was human words can't dis understand or describe the beauty of heaven. And if you read Revelations, it talks about the unspeakable beauty of heaven. It's almost directly out of Revelations that they quoted. But they're, it's so beautiful that there's no human words that can describe it. So, it, again, though, in my quest to find yeah. my answers, I've also been studying this atheist-turned-Christian. So what he is, since he was 11 years old, got into astronomy. And he says based on the study of stars in the solar system. Now he's 72, he's a PhD, and that's all he does is study yeah. the stars. Yeah. Yes, that's what he is. Yes. That he can prove that the genesis of the Bible is completely true based on the science of the stars and that he can prove that it's a long period of time, not a short period of time. It's not a 24-hour period of time. See, we, that's where we well, disagree on the young well, traditions. But well, so, but see, okay, but here's the very interesting part of this, okay? This kind of goes into what we're talking about. His science studies. That's not important. When you study the stars, you're studying light years away, so you're studying history back. You're seeing the past. You're seeing the past. And he says that they have a telescope that can go all the way back to the Big Bang. That is what his name is, Dr. Ross Hughes. Have you heard of him? Nope. But I was, Jesus I studied under an astrophysicist in kind of college. I was a physics yeah. minor. Okay, wow. So this guy is blowing me away with everything that he has to say about the Bible being true. Verifying my faith that the Bible isn't just a book, that it's actually the Word of God. And they've actually, <clears throat> things that they have said come out of the Bible. So... You also have to remember, um, the Bible was written by man, inspired Over a by, long period of time. Inspired by yeah. God. Yes. It wasn't just this book, here you go. Right. And, and but see, what some, I'm trying to say is this, this astrophysicist, before he studied the Bible, he studied the Quran, the Torah, the Hindu, he, he didn't say. And when he got his hands on the Bible, because he was an atheist, instantly, he said, it made total sense to me. And he said, now that made me want to go back and research more of my work in the stars because I can actually, per the book of Genesis chapter 1 and 2, prove, based on the stars, that all that is true. Now, inspired he, means in spirit. Yeah. From the spirits. Yeah. That's where the word comes from. And they're actually, down through really? time, they have taken books out of the Bible if they didn't like what they said. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not, there are other books that were written at the same time yeah. period. And I think you also, like, I've got a book called uh, Misreading Scripture Through Western Eyes. It's part of my purity research. 
I'm drinking you, but I'm doing that stuff. Yeah. I'm mixing stuff up. Um, and that's really interesting, like how we read the scripture based on the culture. Yes. Yeah. Now, the other thing, I'm a science guy, and we live in a three dimensional time I'm and space. I'm a science person. I love science. <clears throat> but we live in a three dimensional time and space. Yes. Once you pass the other side, three there dimensional isn't. time and space doesn't exist. Right. They're in dimensions six, eight, ten beyond that. They are able to do things, and time means nothing to them. Yeah. When they say they're going to do something tomorrow, that tomorrow may be six months away, a year away, or could be seconds away. Right. It does. It's not literal to us. Yes. And a no. day is like a thousand years. It yes. says that somewhere. It's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there's no time. <clears throat> right. Now, one of the things that we see is solid objects coming through brick walls in here. Really? And Can I said, see it? Please. Well, no. I'm inviting no, you to no, do that. Now, one of the things that we asked was, how do you manipulate concrete items through physical things? And they said, very easy, because in our dimensions, multi-dimensions, those walls don't exist. So we're just moving things through space. You through, see them in your three-dimensional space as going through walls that really don't exist in our time and space. Wow. Is there, are, they a, are you still a sex, a female or a male, or are you just you with no sex? You, well, you, you have who you are. You identify with who you were. Yeah, you identify with who you are. If you show yourself as an apparition, it's who you were. Um, so people can identify you and things I like see. that. That's for the humans, right? Yes. Now... There's no relationship of marriage on the other side. You have soul circles and relationships, but you're not bound to each other like a marriage. Is, there's no sexual. No, 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 none of that. That's so, so, thing. that's so here, a human thing. Here's a yeah. So that's why I wonder with transgenders or gay people, maybe they jumped into the wrong box. No, well, okay, that that's a different to do story. With the whole reincarnation thing. It's not reincarnation. They don't call reincarnation. They call it life experiences. And some people sign up for a certain life experience. And so they're here to experience that. And sometimes they come back too fast and they remember being the other gender. And it kind of confuses them. Yes, because but as it, a different it, sex. Yeah. And it, it, imagine. It, <coughs> that's, what, that's the explanation Marilyn for Monroe that. Yes, yes they came back like too the soon. The ultimate woman's woman and she loved being a woman and... And if she came back right away as a man, it's she like, wait a minute. That was a mistake. I'm supposed to well, be a woman. yeah, because your subconscious all of a sudden starts yeah, shooting out confused. thoughts of the past, not on purpose, but it does, and it confuses you. So, have you heard of Dr. Ian Dunbar? No. Um, or not Ian Dunbar, I'm sorry, Dr. Um, oh my God, what was his name? Ian Stevenson, that's what it was. So he did a study of children of the ages of six and under, over 2,500 children that he could prove they lived before. So yeah. there was an example of a child kept saying to his mom and dad, like, oh, that's what it was. He was sitting on his mom's lap, pointing at a picture in the newspaper and said, oh, that's ba 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 ba. And his mom was like, wow, and that's a Japanese name and you're only three. How would you know yeah. that? Well, again, there's a couple things that are indicators. A child who... Learned how to play the a piano at an early age and as a, a so master he's musician. Piano for a first yeah. time and just plays a masterpiece. Has played it before. That's somebody yeah. who's experienced that before. Now, you got to realize that a lot of these ex these people that come back for new experiences. Um, Why wouldn't you call that reincarnation? It's, reincarnation is. A belief that you come back as a higher yeah, being. You climb a ladder. You climb a ladder from a lower life back, force to a higher one to a higher one. That's not, they said there's no such thing as that. Okay. You come back for different experiences as a person, as... You're experiencing it's, hunger. In other words, you don't come back as uh, a cow. Illness. Yes. Right. That's, right. that's yeah. reincarnation yeah. is the, the Indian culture where you come back as a higher being if you're good enough. Okay. And if you're bad, you go back down the ladder. Oh, that's reincarnation that's, in I the see. truth that's sense. Much. There is no I such thing. I do respect all animals, so I could be a Hindu, but it's no, all right. but that's, that, that does not happen. Okay, Sorry. you don't go from an animal to a person. That's kind of nice to know. Yeah. But some somebody told me they did a past life regression and they remember being a tree. Yeah. 